Today in the news, we had a short-lived resurrection and a big dot little AMD. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. Earlier this year, around CES, there was a rumor that NVIDIA would sort of relaunch the RTX 2060 series of GPUs. Essentially, they would just kick production back up with TSMC. This made sense since production of the RTX 30 series of GPUs was already pretty tight, and of course, the demand was through the roof. If they had extra GPUs, even last gen ones to sell, they would fly off the shelf. And since the 2000 series of GPUs was made with a larger 12 nanometer process, then there would be no problem for TSMC to allocate some capacity and resources to that. Well, the rumor was kind of true as more and more RTX 2060s became available. It wasn't a miracle maker, but they were available in cheap pre-builds by the dozen. Come to today's news where apparently Nvidia is allegedly pulling the brakes on that whole endeavor. This information comes from the forum called Board Channels where an internal notice says that Nvidia will be greatly reducing the 2060s supply and then they will shift production capacity to the RTX 30 series. Now at first when I heard that I thought well that makes no sense. The 2060 is made by TSMC and the 30 series by Samsung so they're not even manufacturing in the same location. So this shift in production capacity is total bull. Plus the process itself is different with one at 12 nanometers and the other at eight. So even if it was in the same fab, it wouldn't make a difference. The equipment to make both is completely different. And then I realized, well, there's more than just the chip itself to consider. Things like ICs, caps, memory, etc. they all have to be purchased in bulk. So maybe using these components will be redirected to focus on delivering RTX 30 series cards instead of the 20. Don't get me wrong though, it won't make an immediate impact to our situation, but let's hope that this and the crypto mining specific cards and the new light hash rate lineup compounds into a difference in the market. Next up, we got AMD, and honestly, I thought this was some interesting information. It's a little far out since it talks about tech that AMD isn't planning to implement for a long time, but it's still very interesting. So we know that big dot little is the now and the near future, right? I mean, Intel is going all in with that at the end of this year slash the start of next year with their Alder Lake generation. And of course, most ARM processors nowadays features something similar. Well, AMD is supposed to join the fray with their Zen 5 generation using Zen 5 cores as the big cores and Zen 40 cores for the little ones. And now we have a patent that seems to explain a little more about how these big dot little processors will work. The abstract says that the patent is for a method, system, and apparatus, which determines that one or more tasks should be relocated from a first processor to a second processor by comparing performance metrics to associated thresholds by using other indications. To relocate the one or more tasks from the first processor to the second processor, the first processor is stalled and state information from the first processor is copied to the second processor. Sorry, it's just I'm saying processor a lot here. The second processor uses the state information and then services incoming tasks instead of the first processor. For example, a small processor is doing something perfectly fine, but it's doing it a little bit slower than usual. Well, the state of that processor will be transferred over to the big processor, which will complete it faster. And essentially, there are checks in place to make sure that the speed is always optimal. While this is just the abstract, it really reflects what was written in the patent, which I read in full and keeps on repeating itself. Honestly, I didn't see that way of using the big dot little format. The way that I thought it was going to work was that the little core would do little things in parallel of the big cores doing big things. And if you ever needed maximum performance, well, all the cores would basically just focus on one task. I never expected that a whole task would get shifted from one core to the next, simply because the smaller core wasn't doing it, I don't know, fast enough, efficiently enough, or because the big core needed to uh, 
to be used. So it basically transferred its state over to the smaller core. It really seems like the moment that Big Dat Little becomes mainstream for x86 processors, the race won't be about core count. Heck, it might not even be about efficiency on the desktop platform. The race will be all about who can make the best task scheduling for heterogeneous computing. Thankfully though, the next generation of Windows, whether it's uh, Windows 11, like the news suggests, or just another iteration of Windows 10. Anyways, this new version will feature a new task scheduling method specifically for this big dot little format. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about big dot little? Personally, I really am because I kind of really wonder how everything is going to work at that point, how my programs are going to respond to that. Is it going to be invisible or are some programs only going to be using the big cores? This is super interesting to me. So let me know what you guys think down below. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Catch you on the flip side.